that, that needs a tippy toppy too. Let's give it a little tippy toppy too. Let's hope there is enough to give it a tippy toppy too. There is, and I reckon that's gonna look like a little gem. <laughs>well hello there perfect drafters whoa <laughs> hit that glass because it is quite a tall glass well hello there perfect drafters how are we doing i hope we're good i do i hope we're good what's in this little beauty well i can tell you what's in this little beauty a leaky keg look at that yeah it's dripping people it's dripping had a nightmare came out to the bar last night and I just heard a and it's because the drip tray got that full, it had gone through the bar, it was dripping down below, it wasn't pretty, I'm not happy. So what keg's in there that's leaky leaky loo? Well, it's this. Yeah, it's a Peroni. Now, the issue is it's on red already because of the drippage. I don't know if it's a dodgy pipe, the tube. I don't know if it's a dodgy tube. I don't know if it's an O-ring situation. I don't know if it's a faulty keg. I don't know. I just don't know. But what I'm hoping is there's at least a pint in there. Yeah. So it is Peroni, right? You can't always get this. It's limited edition. It's on, it's off, it's on, it's off. It comes back in. It's good. It's off, it's gone. We all know what Peroni is. We've all had it. Well, we probably haven't all had it, but quite a few of us have had Peroni, yeah? It's one of those drinks, and I don't mind in Pizza Express. It's an Italian middle lager, quite light. What kind of percentage is it? It's 5% ABV. It does kind of like taste that, I think, from what I remember. I mean, if you had this, you had Madri, you had, I don't know, what else? Moretti. Um, what other good lagers do you generally get at a bar, at a pub? I can't think of many more than that, because you often get like a Carling, you get a Foster's, you get a Carlsberg, you know. So actual lager-wise, I think this is kind of like Peroni, Moretti, kind of Madri, kind of styly, yeah. And I know people will scoff at that, you know, because some of those are are not great, but the mainstream okay-ish beers, that's how I'd classify them, the better than a Foster's, the better than a Carlin, better than a Carlsberg. And like I say, when you're in Pizza Express, it's a little gem, costs a blooming fortune, but it's a little gem. Right, so this keg, £42.90, I believe, so yeah, not cheap on this either, right? But I've got this glass, I don't know where it came from, but I do like the Peroni glass. The tallness of it, I like. The kind of flash of red with Peroni just there, I like. Yeah. I don't, I don't think I've ever seen a different Peroni glass than that. But anyway, it's not about the glass, although it does add to the whole experience. That's what I find. But anyway, so on here, actually, it does tell me, we will have a look at the keg, if I remember. Sometimes I don't remember. You know, and then I'll come to it later, and it's like, ah, when I'm editing it, I haven't shown you the keg. But anyway, it says on here, 1846. So it's been done a while. Yeah, I presume the same kind of thing is on the keg. Beera Peroni, yeah. Now, obviously, it does, it kind of reeks Italian, doesn't it? It's like, this is Italian. I wonder if it is actually brewed in Italy. Don't know. We'll have a look on that keg, see if it is. I've got myself some snackage, a little bit different. We're going to do the usual order of play, people. I'll have a look at the keg, we'll do the pour, I'll bring it in, we'll see if there's any bubs, I want to see bubs this time. Is it nucleated? Dunno. Dunno. Oh yeah, yeah it is, I can see some etchings in there. So we should see some bubs if we get a full pint. Look, you can still see it dripping. I'm hopeful, I'm hopeful there's a full pint. I think I've had probably four or five out of it, but then there's the leakage situation. God knows how many pints have gone in that leakage. Anyway, after a sippy suppy sue, I'll have a snack, bit of snicky snacky snoo. 
I'll rate both of them. I'll let you know what I think. Yeah? That's how we do things around here, people. Let's have a look at that keg. Let's do the pour. Yeah? Cheers, perfect drafters. Okay, so there is the Peroni keg. Yeah? I remembered to show it. Italiano. Nastro Azzurro. Very Italian in there. It is dripping. I'll tell you what, it's a dripper. Anyway. Peroni Roma Biera. 1846. It's a 5%er, like I say. Let's see where it's brewed. Right. Where are you brewed? Does it tell me? Does it? It, it might do here. It might do here. Right. Let's have a look. So, it's always a thing now, isn't it? Where are you brewed? You are brewed, mate. Brewed in the EU. Yeah? Just brewed in the EU. Peroni registered kind of road in Italy. So it's registered in the right place. Stop dripping. Um, just brewed in the EU. That's all I can tell you. Yeah. It's got the ingredients there. Yeah, malts. Water. Malted barley. Maize, hops. Carbon dioxide. It had a good shelf life. First 2025. Anyway, there's the Peroni keg. Very well-known branding. All good. Nice white background. Very simple. I like it. Good font. It's Peroni. Let's get it back in. Okay, so the keen-eyed amongst you will see I've got it set to three degrees. You'll also see that I've got this old drip tray there. Yeah, the other one, like I say, because of the drip, had filled up. So I thought I'd put this one here. It's slightly bigger. Yeah. Although that, I can see, is filling. Let's just hope, perfect drafters, we've got a pint. Come on, here we go. Okay, I mean, when the compressor goes on that long, repressurizing the keg, it does make you think maybe something's not quite right with it. But anyway, we've got almost a pint due to Baldy's pullage, not quite. But that will get a tippy-toppy too, and it wasn't slowing down. I think we're okay. Let's bring it in. So there it is, perfect drafters. Peroni in a Peroni glass. You can see the lightness of that. Look at that. Yeah? It does look a little bit light, doesn't it? When it's that see-through, it's kind of like, how's the mouthfeel going to be? Look at that. So, some bubs, some bubs, I've seen more, I've seen less. Slow moving carbonation, like I say, not quite got the full pint in there, but it is a nice white foam head. Quite a compact, actually, yeah? Smelling like Peroni, looking like Peroni, you know what that is? That's Peroni in a glass. Let's give it a sip, people, let's give it a sip. Oh, there we go, I'll go. As if it's a long way, yeah? As if I've done a bit of a marathon before getting round to this side of the bar. Oh, that's an old man noise. It really is. Well, I have been painting the house, so do feel a little bit achy. Yeah, you didn't need to know that. But anyway, that, that needs a tippy-toppy too. Let's give it a little tippy-toppy too. Let's hope there is enough to give it a tippy-toppy too. There is, and I reckon that's going to look like a little gem. <laughs> I'll tell you, there's something about doing a bit of DIY than having a beer, yeah? Nothing else quite matches it. In fact, I would say that almost plays in the favour of this beer just here because when you've done a bit of DIY and you got a little bit of a thirst on, it always tastes that a little bit better. Right, look at that, yeah? I've had a few comments recently of people saying, I can't quite get a good beer out of it. You know, I'm getting too much of a foam head and I'm getting this, getting that. How do you pull your beers like that? Not all the time, you know, there's enough people that can with this machine. Don't get me wrong, I have not got any special abilities, but look at what you can get, yeah? We often take it for granted, perfect drafters, we really do, but this, this machine that we can have at home can pull that kind of beer. 
Just now and again, take a step back and appreciate the moment. We're fortunate, fortunate to have this kind of machine. A lot of the people that watch this already have this machine. I know that for a fact, yeah? So let's not moan, because you can moan. There's enough to moan about in the world, isn't there? But when you've got a beer like that sitting in front of you, let's not quibble. Quibble. Love that word. Is it even a word? Don't know. Right. Peroni, people. Let's give it a sippy suppy sue. Okay. Right. Woo! It's refreshing. We know it's going to be refreshing. If there's anything that I could guarantee that I was going to say when I was cracking into that beer, it would be, oh, that's refreshing. Because it just is. And at three degrees, that's a gem. Yeah. You ain't got to worry about, like, should I set it higher to get the taste out of this? Because let's face it, there's not an abundance of taste in this. There's not loads of different ingredients. We're not looking at those kind of ales that, you know, have got a bit of caramel or a bit of bit of toffee, a bit of fig, right? We've not got that. What we've got here is a lager, yeah? And you get the malts, you get the barley, you get the, the, the taste that you expect, yeah? I don't think there's anything else in it. You know, it's, it's, it's a little bit like Stella-esque, right? Simple ingredients and you know what you're getting. But that is refreshing. And boy, did I need a bit of refreshment. I really did. In terms of carbonation, it's got quite a bit, right? When I brought that in, I didn't see many bubs. Looking at it now, there's a few. There is a few, but quite slow moving. And it's almost quite surprising after looking at that, just how carbonated it feels in the mouth, but it does, right? And that, you know, it's a pleasant aftertaste. It's nice. There's no badness in that aftertaste. Let's go for the mouthfeel. Like I say, quite carbonated, but medium fullness, right? You know, you've not got a watery down Fosters or anything like that. But it's also, let's say, you know, it's not a low and brown. It's, you know, it ain't, it ain't a spaten. It hasn't got that kind of fullness of those beers, of those lagers. Let's not pretend. This is a mainstream beer and it goes down very easily. Simple as that. If you have got a nice pizza in front of you, boom, yeah? If you have got some fish and chips, boom, have it with it. If you've got a nice barbecue kicking off outside, boom, yeah? All of those kind of things, this is quaffable. Simple as that, it's a quaffable lager. And I think you knew it was gonna be before I cracked into it. It's good. I wouldn't say there's any kind of extra taste to that, like I say, there's no kind of lemony, lemony taste to it or anything like that, which sometimes you can get with some beers, some lagers, like Hawkston, you know, it's got a bit of a lemon twang to it. This hasn't, it really hasn't. It's just a straightforward lager, yeah. I've had this in pubs, I've had this out of bottles. Um, this is better than a bottled version, 100%, and actually I think Pizza Express often give you bottles. Um, Obviously, you can get them from Tesco's as well. It's better. You can tell that's a nice quality draft beer. A little bit gassy, but apart from that, I would say I knew what I was getting and I got it. 5%, like I say, you can get that taste of it, yeah? But I think that will go down very easily. You know, you could have quite a good session on that. That's what I'm thinking. Right. Not that I'm going to have that now. But I've got some snicky snacky snoo. Let's crack into that. Right, so this. I've always seen these in Tesco's, these biltong jobbos, yeah? And I thought, should I do that with my snackage? Should I have that? Yes, no, don't know. You know, I know it's kind of, is it South African type thing? Biltong, I think. 
It's probably not made there. Like this probably ain't made in Italy. But I can't even see where it's made, to be honest. Oh, there we go. New World's for Oakland's Church Lane, York. Made in York. There's no more blurbage on the back. On the front, though, what is it? Kruger Biltong. Marinated beef silver side, air dried and sliced. It's gluten free, it's high in protein and there's 161 calories per pack. That don't sound too bad. Someone told me the other day there's 100 calories in a slice of bread. So I'm happy with 161 in that pack. Now, why I have gone for these this time is because I don't know if it's always been there when I've looked at these, but I've spotted these are chilli, chilli flavour. So, <laughs> Happy days, they might have a little bit of spice to them. Let's have another little sippy suppy sue, and then I'll crack into the bag. Lovely stuff. Right, it's got a nice tear here, although it does seem rather low. It goes underneath the Save the Rhino. Savetherhino.org. Good. Right. Ooh. Let's give it a bit of a snifty. Oh, that smells all right. That does smell all right. That smells pretty good. Now then, looking quite dark. Wait a minute, what's that in there? There's something in there. Do not eat. Do not microwave oxygen absorber. Well, I'm just gonna pop that to the side. Yeah, not gonna eat it. it says do not eat. Right, so let's pull some of these out. Right, here we go, look at that. It's all this dried stuff, isn't it? Air dried, air dried. Ooh. Oh, smells all right, that. That does smell all right. Right. <laughs> I've got a, got a two, three maybe bit grab. Got some chilli kind of flakes in there. Right, perfect drafters. Let's give this a little bit of a taste. And what kind of beer snackage is this? Mmm. Chewy. Very chewy. Chewy. Right. Got a bit stuck in between the teeth. So it's chewy. There's no doubt about it, that has got some chew to it. Not a massive great chilli chick. Chilli chick? Chilli kick. But you can taste it's there. It's at the back of the throat, I suppose, because it's in the mouth for so long, it kind of does linger at the back of the throat. If that was too spicy, and you're kicking off with that in your mouth for that lot, that like length of time, that's just going to be too much. So maybe I've thought about that. Get the beefiness. Get the chewiness. It's chewy. I don't know how many times I'm going to say this is chewy because that is chewy stuff. Now, I'll go for one more. I think there's one, maybe another piece stuck to it. It's nice. It's nice, it's just, a, it sticks around so long, it's not like a, you know, chow down. Keep chowing down on, on the snackage. I'm not doing, it's just in my mouth and then it's taking time. I feel like I'm burning calories as well, as I'm eating it. I mean, being as there's only 161 calories in that bag, you might actually lose weight by eating it. Obviously, don't take that as word, yeah, as kind of advice, how to lose weight by built on but yeah it's tasty enough it's just it's kind of like it's almost if i'm ready for a bit of another beer another sippy suppy sue i can't because i'm still chewing let's see what it uh see what it does in terms of elevating the beer taste Not bad beer snackage, not bad. It's just very different. You know, it's not nuts, obviously. It's not crisps, again, obviously. It's built on. 
Right. It's just very different. I've got nothing to compare it to. That's the thing. Um, it is its own kind of snack, isn't it? You know, it's a bit different. And I don't know if this is a good version. I don't know if this is a good brand of Biltong. Let me know if you think it is, if you've had others. Right, for that, that is very straightforward. It's kind of Moorish. It's very refreshing. It will go with a burger. It will go with a barbecue. It will go with anything else that's very simple and effective. If the sun was shining, the sky is blue, which it isn't, yeah? You kind of get the feeling that winter's upon us. Then it's a cracking summer beer. It is. But, like I say, it ain't summer anymore. What am I going to give it? What I've got to do is kind of place it amongst some of the other perfect draft lagers, of which there is an abundance of belters. So, obviously, you've got the kind of, especially now, Oktoberfest beers on there, the Lowenbrow Oktoberfest and Space and Oktoberfest. It doesn't touch those, right? Let's just take them, push them to the side and say, look, they're, they're there, mate. You ain't touching it. You ain't touching it. Now, what we do also have, I, I, what it reminds me of actually a little bit in terms of perfect draft is Mahal. Yeah, so it's a little bit like that. I would say that's its closest kind of competitor on the perfect draft. I know they don't compete. It's all one nice family, but... You know what I mean? And then I'd say Spaten's better. I would say Hawkston's better. I do like a Hawkston. Jupiler is better. Hasroad is better. There's some better ones, isn't there? Now I'm kind of thinking of them. Well, there's some better ones. Kind of, I would put it around the kind of Bex Gold, which ain't bad. Which ain't bad. I don't know if it's still about, but. Bex Gold kind of um, Mahal kind of level. That's where I'd put it. Um, it's below a spate. So what I'm going to say is I'm going to give this a 7. I'm going to give it a 7. Probably wouldn't buy it again because at a 7 and at £42.90 and being a very mainstream beer, I just don't think it's great value. I just don't. I mean, don't get me wrong. There's nothing bad about it. There's nothing bad about it. You've got mates around. They'll probably lap it up. I know people that really love Peroni. And they'll probably even buy this machine because Peroni's on it. It might be a reason they did it. But for me, there's far better on here. Yeah? And far better that have been on here for a long time. This will get the eye of many a person. Because, like I say, it's a well-known beer. But... Long term, I probably ain't buying that again. Nothing offensive about it, but I ain't buying that again. Because there's others that are better. That's the only reason. That's the only reason. So, I've given that a 7. Did I give it a 7? I'm giving it a 7. That a 7. This, this Kruger Biltong, which I like the branding... It's not going to influence the score. But, and again, it's hard because I ain't got anything to compare it against. When you're comparing nuts with nuts, you know, I've had plenty of nuts in my time. Then, you know, there's plenty to go on and I can kind of get a grading straight away. Crisps, yeah? Easy. Easy to grade. This, I'm a bit of a loss. I'm at a bit of a loss. What I'm going to say is I'm going to give them the same as that, a seven. I'm going to give them a seven as well. Maybe that, for a Biltong, is amazing. But I don't know. Me, in terms of what kind of beer snack grading am I giving that right now, I'm giving it a seven. That's what I've done. Thank you very much. Right. There we go, perfect drafters. Yet another keg review. There's some more to come. I know I'm spacing these out a little bit. Yes, I am. And I've got a bit of a different review coming up. <laughs> a very different review. Not even a beer review. Yeah. Someone has made contact and said, Baldy, will you review this? And I think they're going to supply the product. 
I don't know how I'm going to review it. It's very random, but I'll give it my best shot. Anyway, what I'm going to say to you is this, Perfect Drafters. Whatever you're doing this weekend, make it an absolute belter. Have a few beers with a few mates. Enjoy. Whatever you're doing, just enjoy. Yeah? Have a good and perfect, Drafters. Until next time, cheers. Have a good and cheers.